trading Bitcoin is a sign of like a, a lesser intellect, you know, in Absolutely. my opinion, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, I'm like, come to your senses, you know, I <laughs> just imagine, buy it I and imagine. hold it. You know, like if you roll the clock back to 2007, Steve Jobs invents the iPhone and, you know, people thought, oh, it's a toy. By 2009, the iPhone's got an app store. And if you understood anything about software, the iOS is a new, it's a new operating system and it's going to be its own ecosystem, at least as important as the web. And it's going to, it's going to spawn an entire new generation of applications, right? And the mobile wave is responsible for what? Like $5 trillion, five, 10, five to $10 trillion dollars of wealth over the next decade can you imagine someone sitting around saying oh i get mobile device technology and you're trying to time the market in apple stock in 2011 like you're buying and selling apple stock in 2011 I'm like, you're like you want to shake i'm like are you out of your mind i'm i'm trading facebook stock back and forth between eight dollars a share and four dollars a share and twelve dollars a share and you're you just want to do <laughs> this like like, do you not understand that one day every single person on the planet is going to have one of these things in their pocket and it's going to go up by a factor of a hundred and you're trying to like trade Apple stock between a dollar 25 and a dollar 17 and bragging about how you bought it a dollar 25 and sold it at two dollars and 11 cents. And have you figured out the consequences of being short the share if it goes up by a hundred dollars? Like the amount, like, are you out of your mind? Like, because, by the way, like, I, I spent 30 years in the business and I obsess over this every single freaking minute of the day. And I wrote a book on it, right? I wrote the book. I predicted the future. You know, I made $500 million investing in these things, right? And I started and, and I put a small amount of capital in. I have no freaking clue. Like, you know, in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, I have no clue. And I'm certain nobody in the world understood it better than me. Like some people might have made more money than me, but, but you know, like all these people that think that somehow they're going to time the market and they're going to guess, it's, it's probably 10,000 times harder to time the market when you know the future than it is to shit, I mean, to, to, to sit and, uh, and to wait for a decade. And like, you know, this, the Bitcoin thing, this kind of is working in 12 weeks or 24 weeks. But when I did this, I didn't expect it to work in 12 weeks. I did it thinking that in one to three years, people will think I'm not an idiot. And in 10 years, I'll be happy I did it. And I'm ready to get beat to death for the first one, two years, if people are going to beat me to death. Because you could have been beat to death on Facebook stock and Apple stock and Google stock and whatever in a one to two, three year time frame. There's anybody that tells you that they actually know the direction of this stuff over the course of days or weeks or months, they're deluding themselves and they're deluding you. And, and it's almost comical because they all hold themselves out as being like experts in something. And like, I have been the expert in something. And the one thing that I knew was I had no, you know, the only time I ever lost money on Apple, the only time, but can you imagine losing money on Apple stock investing in the last 20 years at any point in time from 1997, there's not a single way, John, you could have lost money betting on Apple stock as a hodler in 22 years except i did it i bought an option i bought a leap i actually bought a call option but but not short long i went long apple stock i bought call by the way i'm not going to go long apple stock with a 30 or 60 or 90 day option i bought an 18 month leap option on apple stock the stock traded down it stayed down 17 months, 18 months, my option expired. I lost the premium and the stock shot up. <laughs> and I'm saying, I freaking predicted the future. I wanted some leverage. I'm so angry. And the takeaway from that is if you believe in something and you have conviction, buy the underlying asset 
ideally with very low leverage or no leverage and hold it forever. Yeah. You know, like, and all these other cute things, like you get cute. It's like, how could I be wrong in 18 months? It was 19 months, John. And, and I was right in 19 months and the option expired. It's almost like God, God punishing me for trying to be cute and gamble with this sort of thing. It's like, but you know, with Bitcoin, there's an anxiety that if you let it go, you may not be able to get it back. I mean, I know it's an open market, it's, it's liquid 24 seven, but when, when you have an asset like this, that has the level and degree of scarcity that Bitcoin has, and that has so much, like when people get Bitcoin, they don't just, as we were saying a little bit earlier, like the people that are making a 1% allocation, they're looking at the technical analysis, they're looking at its past performance and saying, maybe this will balance my portfolio. When you fully go down the rabbit hole, you know, you want to put all of your available, you know, that if it, whatever doesn't impair or impinge on your, your, you know, lifestyle, uh, your standard of living, the rest of it, you want to put it in Bitcoin. And to think that you would be so bold to, to let go of that tether for a while, send it out into the world on the, with enough certainty that you're going to be able to get it back. And then some, I think is, an, uh, is something that gives, you know, real hodlers so much anxiety that they wouldn't even think of it. I have anxiety going to bed at night if I'm short. You know, like, there's a there's the point when I started buying it. Uh, like, there's a funny story. I'm not going to say who I did it with. I I started buying Bitcoin, you know, and they thought I was going to buy like uh, ten million dollars worth of it, and I wired in a hundred million dollars, and I started and I started buying it, and I bought twenty twenty five million in the day. And no one had ever bought $25 million worth of, of Bitcoin on their exchange in a few hours. And, and they said, well, what, what are you, you're burning up the entire system and you're blowing out the spreads and this is a big problem and you're going to drive the price up. And I, I said, well, I, you know, I just need to get this stuff. Like I can't, by the way, the price was down in the nines. And uh, I was just imagining someone was going to get smart and drive the price up to 10 or 11 or 12 or 30. And I was going to chase it up. So I had anxiety. I'm like, I have to get this trade in before the rest of the world comes to its senses. So I'm buying it. I, you know, I swear to you, they put me in a corner and they said, you know, you have to stop now. You're I buying know. too much. <laughs> like they literally put me in a corner and said, you know, you're buying too much. All the other people on the system feel like you're driving the price up. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, really? And, you know, and then I went to bed that night, you know, and I was just really like worked up. I could hardly sleep because they had cut me off when I bought 20 million and I wanted to buy 35 million that day. And I was like, what if the 15 million that I didn't buy starts to run away from me? It's going to cost me millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> it doesn't really matter how much you buy, right? It's the same idea, which is I need to buy it all now before somebody figures this thing out. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.